In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are walking in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The same footsteps. How is this possible? The day of our baptism, uh, Jesus, our Savior, began to live within us at the very core of our being. Where Jesus walks, I walk. And where I walk, there goes Jesus. I must have confidence that what we are praying for, what we are seeking, is what Jesus himself inspires us to seek. When I <clears throat> pray with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my being, Jesus, our Lord, gives to us all that we ask for from the depth of his sacred heart. And that comes from his heart to my heart and yours, filling the heart of each one of us with the same mind, the same heart, the same spirit in these days of the sacred triduum. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty Father, you have called us to participate in this most sacred meal in which your only begotten Son, about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to his church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, Lord God, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of divine love and of life. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Lectura del Libro del Éxodo En aquellos días, el Señor le dijo a Moisés y a Aarón en tierra de Egipto, Este mes será para ustedes el primero de todos los meses y el principio del año. Díganle a toda la comunidad de Israel, el día 10 de este mes, tomará cada uno un cordero por familia, uno por casa, si la familia es demasiado pequeña para comérselo, que se junte con los vecinos y elija un cordero adecuado al número de personas y a la cantidad que cada cual pueda comer. Será un animal sin defecto, macho, de un año, cordero o cabrito. Lo guardarán hasta el día 14 del mes, cuando toda la comunidad de los hijos de Israel lo inmolará al atardecer. Tomarán la sangre y rociarán los, las dos jambas y el dintel de la puerta de la casa donde vayan a comer el cordero. Esa noche comerán la carne asada a fuego, comerán panes sin levadura y hierbas amargas. Comerán así con la cintura ceñida, las sandalias en los pies, un bastón en la mano y a toda prisa, porque es la Pascua, es decir, el paso del Señor. Yo pasaré esa noche por la tierra de Egipto y heriré a todos los primogénitos del país de Egipto, desde los hombres hasta los ganados. Castigaré a todos los dioses de Egipto, yo, el Señor, la sangre les servirá de señal en las casas donde habitan ustedes. Cuando yo vea la sangre, pasaré de largo y no habrá entre ustedes plaga exterminadora cuando hiera yo la tierra de Egipto. Ese día será para ustedes un memorial y lo celebrarán como fiesta en honor del Señor de generación en generación. Celebrarán esta festividad como institución perpetua. Palabra de Dios. Al Salmo responsorial cantaremos todos juntos como coro. Señor, 
todo el bien que me ha hecho, alzaré la copa de la salvación invocando su nombre. Señor, yo soy tu siervo, hijo de tu esclava, rompiste mis cadenas. tu nombre Señor cumpliré al Señor mis votos en presencia de todo el pueblo reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, 
Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had loved his own in this world and would show his love for them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to hand Jesus over. And so during the supper, Jesus, fully aware that he had come from God and was returning to God, the Father who had handed everything over to him, rose from the meal and took off his cloak. He picked up a towel and tied it around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and dry them with the towel he had around him. Thus he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You may not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter replied, You shall never wash my feet. If I do not wash you, Jesus answered, you will have no share in my heritage. Lord, Simon Peter said to him, then not only my feet, but my hand and head as well. Jesus told him, The man who has bathed has no need to wash except for his feet. He is entirely cleansed just as you are, though not all. The reason he said not all are washed clean was that he knew his betrayer. After he had washed their feet, he put his cloak back on and reclined at the table once more. He said to them, Do you understand what I just did for you? You address me as teacher and Lord, and fittingly enough, for that is what I am. But if I wash your feet, I who am teacher and Lord, then you must wash each other's feet. What I just did was to give you an example, as I have done, so you must do. The Gospel of the Lord. Several times in the Gospels, we hear Jesus tell someone that it wasn't his time yet. His hour had not yet come. Tonight, however, things are different. 
His hour has come. It is time for him to fulfill the scriptures. Something else that was happening was that he was continuing to prepare his disciples for life without him. That was no easy task, for the disciples could be pretty stubborn and thick-headed. And don't forget, sometimes we're a lot like them. One of the things they needed to learn was what he meant when he told them to be servants of others. You see, in today's gospel passage, Jesus gives us a whole new vision of what true leadership should be all about. It should be about service. And he doesn't just tell us what he means, he shows us what he means. He takes the idea of leadership to a completely different level. More than that, he actually turns it upside down. When we hear about Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, we often tend to look at the story as a really nice gesture. But if we stop there, we're missing his point. Jesus is showing us that he wants us to look for ways to serve others. And he shows the disciples this in a way they would not have thought of. You see, the job of washing the feet of guests at a feast was the job of the lowest servants. So what he did was simply another thing that just blew their minds again. He seemed to have a habit of doing that kind of thing. You know, on one hand, maybe they should have expected him to do stuff like that. On the other hand, because these things were so radical, they had no idea what to expect next. It's no wonder that Peter didn't know how to respond when Jesus came to him to wash his feet. It seems to me that the heart of his message was to look for ways to serve others, and even to serve them in unexpected ways. I want you to look back at some point in your life when you were in a bind and you didn't know what to do about it. Maybe you were really down about something, but someone noticed and gave you a hug or said something encouraging that helped you to have hope again. I know I've had that happen to me. Out of the blue, someone did something unexpected that lifted my spirits, and it was something they didn't have to do. Do you realize what that person was doing? They were living out what Jesus told the disciples about that night. In a very real sense, when someone has done something like that for you, it was Jesus washing your feet through that person. Now it's time to let you in on a little secret. Everyone has the capability to do that for others. If we can get our heads around that idea and start to live it out, it has the power to help transform our relationships. You see, Jesus wants us to live this way in all of our relationships, our marriages, our family, all of our friendships. And here's a really hard one. He wants us to live this way in how we treat people we don't even know, how hard it is for us to do that sometimes. What Jesus is saying to us is this. When you see someone who needs some help, be a Jesus kind of servant leader. Let me give you a few examples. Spouses, he's challenging you to look for ways you can do the little things that will make a difference to your spouse. These things may not seem like much, but they tell your spouse that they are cherished and important to you. Those are the kinds of things you cannot put a price on. Do you ever see a coworker struggling with something that you can help with? If you stand there thinking to yourself, that's not my job, you may be missing out on an opportunity to not only help them, but you might be able to help the morale at work too. Children, this applies to you too. When you're finished eating, take your dishes to the sink without being told. Help your brother or sister with their homework or with some task they have to do. They will probably wonder what you're up to. It might even blow their mind, but try to do it anyway. Get the idea? As for how we, how we can help strangers, there are lots of ideas. When you have the chance, Hold the door open for someone. 
When you're stopped in a line of traffic and you see someone trying to get out of a driveway, go ahead and let them in. If you're at the store with a full cart, let someone with a couple of items go in front of you. You just might make somebody's day. I hope you're getting the idea of what this is all about. These are some practical ways we can live out what Jesus did for the disciples. Just pay attention to the situations in your life and look for ways to imitate Jesus. Now don't get the idea that I'm emphasizing these things just so we can be seen as nice people. What Jesus did for the disciples goes much deeper than that. Yes, he wanted to teach them something important, but it is also true that he loved them so much that he simply wanted to wash their feet. If that seems odd, consider that he went to the cross because he wanted to save us all from our sins. Doing things for others out of pure love is what Jesus was and is all about. Jesus wants us to follow his example and do things for others simply out of love. Another way of putting it is this. Jesus wants us to start looking for ways to let him wash someone's feet through us. Amen. Por lo que veo, ahora es mi turno. Pobre del diácono Ruiz. <risa> Pobrecito. Hermanos y hermanas, saben que estamos en, en Jueves Santos y um, este día le llamamos la última cena del Señor, la última cena, y es porque fue la última cena de veras que comió Jesucristo con sus apóstoles y él dijo, ¿sabes qué? ¿Cuánto he deseado que llegue este día? Y no volver a comer esto hasta que venga de nuevo el reino de Dios. Hermanos y hermanas, vean, uh, nosotros somos bendecidos por Dios, definitivamente 100% por Dios. Vea qué sucede. En la Santa Misa, ustedes escuchan que dice, este es el Cordero de Dios, este es el Cordero de Dios, Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo. Dichosos ustedes los invitados a la mesa del Señor. Y nosotros decimos, Señor, yo no soy digno, que, digno de que entres en mi casa, pero una, la, una palabra tuya basta para que me sanes. Pero yo les voy a decir algo, hermanos y hermanas. Eso lo hacemos de rutina, de rutina, así nomás. Pero si, si realmente somos cristianos de veras, lo ponemos en práctica, en práctica. Y eso es lo que funciona, es lo que funciona. Cuando uno practica, escucha la palabra de Dios, entonces uno la pone en práctica y eso cambia nuestras vidas. De veras, hermanos y hermanos. Vean qué dice en la primera lectura. Ustedes tienen los libros ahí, me imagino que la han leído, ¿no? La lectura. El día 10 del mes de abril, entonces dice um, Dios, ¿no? Y este día, mire. Coge un cordero, un cabrito, ok, y lo mantiene hasta el día 14, y el día 14, o sea, se lo comen, ¿no? Se lo comen, lo matan y lo comen, y dice cómo lo va a comer, pero dice también, mire, la sangre de ese corderito, esa sangre, pongan en la puerta, en la puerta de sus casas, dice, dice así en el dintel de la puerta de la casa, dice, dice la palabra de Dios, porque ese día se llama el día de Pascua, y dice, ¿qué significa el día de Pascua? El Señor va a pasar, va a pasar. Pero donde vea la sangre, en la puerta, Él no va a hacer daño. No, no, pasa tranquilo. Pero ¿a quién va a hacer daño? Dice, al, ustedes saben, me imagino que saben, ¿no? De los egipcios, cómo tenían esclavizados a, a los hebreos. Y um, dice el Señor que quiso sacar ese pueblo esclavizado, lo sacó, pero le dio formas como hacerlo. Y cuando ese ángel exterminador, veía la sangre en, en la puerta de la casa, él, él no entraba a esa casa y esa casa no le hacía daño a nadie, nadie. Pero después toda casa que no tenía sangre, sí, eran tocados, tocados por el ángel que exterminaba a las personas. Hermanos, um, 
Nosotros tenemos aquí en el altar el cuerpo y la sangre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Ahora vea usted, ese cuerpo y esa sangre la tomamos en nuestra boca y para adentro. Hermano, eso es maravilloso, es súper bello, maravilloso, porque entra en nosotros, solamente una cosa pasa, una cosa pasa, que a veces lo hacemos y no entendemos, no entendemos nada, pero vea esto, mire lo que dice el apóstol Pablo en la, esta, esta primera carta de los Corintios, dice a los Corintios, miren hermanos y hermanas, yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que yo les estoy diciendo a ustedes, así dice el apóstol Pablo, que el Señor Jesucristo en esta noche, hoy es Jueves Santos, en esta noche que fue entregado, Él tomó pan. Ah, yo no sé nada de Israel, de, no, yo no, no conozco nada de eso, pero me imagino que era como una pita bread, una pita bread, algo así, no, pienso, pienso. No soy tan inteligente, pero pienso así, pienso así. Y dice el Señor, lo parte, lo parte y toma, da, ok, toma, se lo da a, a sus apóstoles, ¿no? Y repártanlo, repártanlo entre ustedes. Y dice Jesucristo, dice perfectamente bien, este, este es mi cuerpo que será entregado por todos ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Todas las veces que lo hagan, háganlo en memoria mía. Y si ustedes ponen atención a la Santa Misa, ¿qué dice cuando cantan los hermanos del coro? Cada vez que comemos de este pan y bebemos de este cáliz, pronunciamos tu muerte, Señor, o proclamamos tu muerte hasta que tú vengas. Pero, ¿quién entiende eso? Hay unos hermanos que vienen, vienen y vienen tarde a la Santa Misa y se van temprano. Vienen antes de, después que está la, la bienvenida y se van antes de la bendición final. Hermanos, eso no es misa entera, no. Y la iglesia manda que uno como católico tiene que escuchar misa completa. Cuando dicen el nombre del Padre, el Espíritu Santo, y después vayan a la paz del Señor. Eso es maravilloso. Pero ¿quién lo hace? Yo he escuchado muchas veces de hermanitos, yo digo católicos, pero mentirosos. Mira qué tanto habló ese viejo. Mira cuánto tiempo se pasó en la Santa Misa pero nunca dice nada cuando va a un otro lugar a divertirse, dice, no, dale más, dale más, yo pago más para que siga la fiesta. Hermanos, muchas cosas no sabemos nosotros. Y yo les voy a decir esto, hermanos, todos los que están escuchando aquí. Yo no soy la persona que habla mal de los protestantes, no, no, no. Yo hablo mal de los católicos, de eso sí, católicos mentirosos, porque la mayoría de, de protestantes son católicos. Bautizados, confirmados, primera comunión, y me dicen a mí, oh, por fin vi la luz, por fin, ahora voy a otra iglesia, en la iglesia católica que no enseña nada. Y, ¿saben hermanos y hermanas qué dicen? Yo ahí comía galletas, escuche bien esto, métase en la cabeza, el cuerpo de Jesucristo no es una galleta, no, el cuerpo y sangre de Cristo Jesús no es una galleta, no. Y, pero vea lo que dicen, una galleta, no, ahí comen galletas, y sacan la lengua y toman esta galleta. Hermanos, la mayoría de esas personas son católicas, pero ellos piensan en la mente que vieron la luz. ¿Y sabe para quién trabajan esas personas? Ellos no saben, trabajan para Satanás, exactamente para Satanás. Aunque digan cosas bonitas, ¿por qué? Porque van tocando puertas diciendo... La iglesia católica es la prostituta, la gran Babilonia. Y viene el, el, la persona católica que no entiende nada y dice, ¡Ay, oh, sí, hermano, bienvenido! Va para su iglesia y él hace lo mismo, tocando puertas, tocando y diciendo lo mismo. La iglesia es la prostituta. Hermanos, hermanas, nosotros somos bendecidos. Pues, y si yo les digo esto a ustedes... No es porque me lo cuenten, porque yo lo he vivido. Personas católicas de aquí, de nuestra parroquia, de aquí, me tocan la puerta. Ellos no saben dónde yo vivo, pero de repente me tocan la puerta, invitándome a su iglesia. Personas que yo he casado aquí, yo he casado. Y piensan que saben todo. Y, oh, sí, andamos tocando puertas, ¿para qué? Dice, crea en Cristo, Cristo salva, Cristo es el único. Yo lo sé que Cristo salva. Y pregunto, me dicen, 
ahora soy salvo, yo no tengo pecados. Pero vea, y yo como yo los conozco, y, y, ¿no tienen pecado? No, nada de pecado, no. Cristo me salvó. Y cuando veo muchas personas, hermano, con problemas, digo, nadie es perfecto. ¿Ok? Escuchen esto, nadie es perfecto. Y si usted se va para otra iglesia que no es de Cristo, pobre de usted, pobre de usted. Métese en la cabeza, las cosas bonitas no siempre son buenas. ¿Por qué va a otra iglesia y le dicen, um, venga profeta de Dios, venga hermana de Dios, venga servidor de Dios? Y usted se alegra muchísimo. Pero hermanos, le aseguro, cosas bonitas realmente a veces no es lo que es la verdad. Miren, Cristo Jesús es nuestro Dios. Él está aquí. Y cuando venga, cuando venga a la Santa Misa, respete a Cristo. El cuerpo y sangre de, de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, respételo. Porque dice el Señor así, dice el apóstol Pablo, por eso muchos de ustedes están enfermos porque no respetan el cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo. Lea este, lea Puede repetir, leyendo muchas veces, 1 Corintios 11, 23 al 26. Puede leerlo cuantas veces quiera y se va a dar cuenta que sí, el cuerpo de Cristo me salva y lo salva. Dios les bendiga. that priests and all who are called to ministry in the church be faithful witnesses to the example of Jesus and guide all believers in holiness, love, and joy in the path of self-sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Vamos a poder diciendo, Señor, escucha nuestra oración. Para que Cristo, el siervo humillado, inspire a los servidores públicos a dedicarse a los necesitados, oremos al Señor. That nations throughout the world renew their commitment to peace and justice, and for an end to war and a return to peace in Myanmar, in Africa, in the Middle East, and between Russia and Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Para que Cristo, el Rey victorioso, lleve a los uh, elegidos que están entre nosotros hacia el reino de Dios, oremos al Señor. That all who will be received into the church, the body of Christ, this Holy Saturday, will find warm welcome, wise guidance, and example of strong faith in our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Por el pueblo de Ucrania, que por la intercesión de María, Reina de la Paz, su país tendrá pronto una paz libre y duradera, oremos al Señor.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Grant, Lord God, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these holy mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this holy sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father in heaven, it is truly right and just our duty and salvation always everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an, ever, of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we take his precious blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, Father, with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Without end, we acclaim. <laughs> rightly gives you praise for through your divine son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting our pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name therefore lord god we humbly implore you by the same holy spirit graciously sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that we bring to you for consecration, that they may become the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night Jesus was betrayed at the Last Supper, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing, and he Broke the, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In the same way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice filled with wine. Giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion and death of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming among us, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Father, look upon the offering of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death on the cross you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the sacred body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Father, may your Son make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the holy apostles and the glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession, Father, in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. Lord God, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in Christian faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, the Bishop of Rome, our Holy Father Francis, the diocesan Bishop Peter, their fellow bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Lord, listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned here before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, grant kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on our world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Hermanos y hermanas, fieles a la recomendación de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo, siguiendo su divina enseñanza, 
nos atrevemos a cantar. Señor, concédenos la paz en nuestros días, para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado, protegidos de toda perturbación, mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Señor Jesucristo, dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concede de la paz y la unidad, tú que vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Hermanos y hermanas, el Señor esté siempre con ustedes. With a reverent bow, let us offer each other the sign of peace. del mundo. 
Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor. Señor, no soy digno, pero una palabra tuya bastará para sanar.
Let us pray. Grant to us, Almighty Lord and God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
please stand? My brothers and sisters, I invite you to spend some time in prayer and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. The church and the altar of repose will remain open until 1945. Also, Father Philip and Father Innocent will be available to hear confessions immediately after Mass. Father, Fa Father Scarcella will be in the office and Father Innocent will be in the confessional. There will be no confessions tomorrow or Good Friday or Holy Saturday or Easter Sunday. So this is your only opportunity to receive confession and absolution tonight. Tomorrow, Good Friday, we will pray the Stations of the Cross in English at 12 noon and in Spanish at 3 p.m. We will have a celebration of the Lord's Passion with the veneration of the Cross and Holy Communion at 6 p.m. in English and 7.30 p.m. in Spanish. We encourage you to come and pray the Stations and come and participate in the celebration of the Lord's Passion. At the end of Mass this evening, I invite you to join in singing our final meditation. Stay here and keep watch with me. And to remain in your place until Father and the deacons have left the sanctuary. When you leave, keep in mind that our solemn vigil has begun. Please leave reverently and quietly in silence all the way out to the parking lot. Hermanos y hermanas, los invitamos a la oración y adoración al Santísimo Sacramento. La iglesia y el altar de reposo estarán abiertos hasta las 9 y 45 minutos. El Padre Felipe y el Padre Inocente están disponibles para escuchar confesiones. Después de la misa, Padre Felipe está en la oficina y el Padre Inocente en el confesionario. No hay confesiones mañana, Viernes Santos, Sábado de Gloria, ni Domingo de Resurrección. Los que quieren confesar tiene que obtiene la oportunidad después de la misa. Mañana viernes, santos, uh, rezaremos el Via Crucis en inglés a las 12 del mediodía y en español a las 3 de la tarde. También tendremos la celebración de la pasión del Señor con la veneración de la cruz y santa comunión a las 6 de la tarde en inglés y a las 7 y media en español. Los invitamos cordialmente a rezar el Via Crucis, a participar en la celebración de la Pasión del Señor. Al final de la misa esta noche, los invitamos a que nos acompañen en el canto y la meditación final. Quédense aquí y velen conmigo. Y por favor, permanezcan en sus lugares hasta que el Padre y los diáconos hayan salido del santuario. Al salir, por favor, recuerden que la vigilia solemne ha empezado. Por favor, salga del templo en orden, en silencio y con reverencia hasta el lugar del estacionamiento. the account of the agony in the garden. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little, and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. 
When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. Please be seated.